So in today's video, I want to focus on the new freight broker or the broker who has never moved refrigerated freight. Because for some reason, new freight brokers tend to have a little intimidation, maybe even a little fear around moving refrigerated freight. And I think the reason for that is because they look at the refrigerated movements as being, I have to deal with a refrigerator and I have to deal with the truck to get the rate in that lane. And I'd rather not have to deal with those two. I would just rather deal with dry van freight or flatbed freight and eliminate this extra piece that comes with it. What I want you to know today is that it's really not difficult, not hard at all to bid to price refrigerated freight, nor is it to move refrigerated freight. Now, does it have its nuances like any other freight? Certainly, but it's not something you should be intimidated by, not be afraid of. This is a type of freight that you can move just like you can move any other freight. You just have to learn some different things about it before you start moving it. So what I'm going to do for you today is I'll show you five things that I believe that are very important for you to know about refrigerated freight before you start moving it. Some would say that you need experience to move refrigerated freight. Not really. That's the first freight that I moved when I got started in my freight broker business was refrigerated freight. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about temperature control freight. I didn't say, oh, okay, well, I know this type of freight has to be at this temperature. I didn't know anything about that. But what you do is you go into it like you would any other freight and you learn about it. You start servicing customers. You figure out how it works through that service that you're providing to the customer. All of the paperwork that you're exchanging, all of the information that the shipper is giving you, you learn about how it works. So there are not any certain things that you need to have as far as experience is concerned when it comes to understanding refrigerated freight. You don't understand it right now. How do you understand it? You start doing it. That's how you understand it. Some people think that there's a higher likelihood that your freight would be damaged because you're dealing with refrigerated freight. In my opinion, that's not the case. Damaged freight comes with the freight broker business. There will be damages. That's just how it works. Anytime you're moving a load from point A to point B, always take into account that damages could take place. And it's not just the movement of loads. Where damages occur most times is in the loading and unloading of loads. A lot of times forklifts hit those loads and damage those boxes, damage the goods within the boxes, and then you have a claim sometimes. Or the shipper might just take it as damaged freight and write it off, meaning he just says, hey, tell the driver that he can keep that box that was damaged or those boxes that were damaged or make sure he doesn't discard them at the facility and keep it moving. But there are times where you do have to deal with claims that just comes with the territory that happens sometimes, but it's not necessarily refrigerated freight. I think it's more connected to the type of freight. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. You see, if you move potatoes, for example, you can move potatoes in a refrigerated truck or you can move potatoes in a vented van. Well, potatoes can get damaged. So if you think there might be a higher risk with moving potatoes, then you say to yourself, I'm not going to bother with potatoes. I'm not going to move potatoes but you wouldn't cut yourself off to an entire sector of freight, refrigerated freight, because you don't want to move potatoes. And yeah, you hear the stories about people saying that it's harder to provide rates on refrigerated freight. It's harder on refrigerated freight than it is to provide a dry van freight or a flatbed freight. Not true. Not in my opinion, at least. You provide the rates in the same way. You're going to consider fuel like you would consider fuel on a dry van load or a flatbed load. Now, some people say, oh, OK, but you have to factor in the fuel that's going for the reefer. Well, not necessarily because we're not dealing with exact numbers here. Whatever number you come up with, if you've never worked that lane before, you're going to take that number to the marketplace to confirm it, to make sure that you're in the right area that you need to be. You're at the right price. So when you take it to the marketplace, if it's off a couple hundred dollars here or there, the marketplace will correct your price. But you need drivers already who have reefers in your network in order to move reefer freight because you don't want to wait until the last minute to start looking for reefer freight drivers. <laughs> well, yes, of course, if you had reefer drivers in your network, that would be great. But if you don't, that's fine too. That's the reason why you have a load board because reefer freight, if it's good reefer freight, it's paying reefer freight and you put it on a load board, 
it's very likely to attract attention. It's very likely that you are going to get calls on that freight if you're in a lane where you have some decent capacity. Now, if you have good freight with good prices, you can sometimes not get calls because there's a scarcity of trucks in that lane that just goes with the territory. And then we get on the phones and we start calling carriers. Some may say, I don't want to move reefer freight because I don't know enough about the reefer trailer itself. I need an extensive knowledge so that I'll know how it operates. Now, when it really boils down to it, you are a freight broker. You are responsible for getting freight. You're selling that freight to a carrier. It is his truck. He maintains the truck. He maintains the reefer. He sets the temperature on the reefer. All I do is give him the number that I need the reefer to be set at. So I don't need an extensive knowledge of reefer trailers. That is the job of the truck driver. Too often, we think as freight brokers, we need to have a knowledge of what's going on with the truck. If you have a knowledge, that's great, but there's a truck driver there for a reason. It's his asset. It's his business. He knows how to handle his business. Now, I want you to know that this is not an attempt by me to get you to move refrigerated freight. Some people are very comfortable and they're doing very well moving the type of freight that they're moving. And if you're okay with that and you would rather stay there for right now, stay there. There's nothing wrong with that. What I'm trying to do is to clear the noise. There's a lot of noise around refrigerated freight and a lot of it is misguided. A lot of it is information that people just take and they run with it without really understanding. I'm just trying to clear up the information to make sure you have the right information if you are interested in moving refrigerated freight. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I certainly hope this information has been helpful. If you want to learn more about the freight broker business, I'll leave a free link in the description. It's my five video series titled How the Load Movement Process Works. It gives you a chance to come into the office with me, watch over my shoulders. I move loads, talk to shippers and carriers. That way you can get a better understanding of how this business works before you come into it. And then if you want to learn more about starting your own freight broker business and then moving to a full-time freight broker, I'll leave a free video right here. So until the next time, I wish you the very best in your life and business. See you at the top because the bottom is much too crowded.